Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. It is Thursday and we have an amazing guest with us who, if you have not connected with her, this will be the moment. We have a great topic. I'm so excited to get started. So please go fill up your coffee cup and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Team morning show where the Teach Better Today is able to stream live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. Lisa Jones is in the house. Lisa, how you feeling? Feeling pretty good. It's spring break for me, so I'm like way enjoying the time off. Um, I picked a moment was quiet, and of course now the dog is ringing her bell to go outside and squeaking her ball. So we got all the little doggy noises going on in the background. I I love good doggy noises, especially when they're not from my dogs, because my dogs ruin videos for the Teach Better team, like, I would say at least once or twice a week. So yeah. I'd rather have another dog squeaking a ball. I'm glad that the dog's having a good time. She's having a great time. And the puppy's at daycare, so I don't have to worry about a flying guest speaker, guest appearance. So Yeah, so, okay, so you have two dogs then. Do we have a nine-year-old Doberman and a, a ten-month-old Doberman? So it's a really interesting combination. So Ooh. the old lady's here and the puppy's at daycare because he's a wild person. So wild child. I love it. Yeah, we have that in common. I have two dogs too, and currently they're sleeping. So we'll see how long that lasts. But glad to have you on this morning. Glad the pups are excited to you know have you on the show as well, Lisa. For our community who may not know all of the work that you're doing in education, do you mind sharing a little bit about? your role and kind of who you are? Sure. So I am in my 19th year teaching. I have taught all kinds of things. I did every special ed job that there was in my building pretty much for about 15 years from teaching self-contained resource rooms or content learning classrooms, all the way to being an inclusion teacher that co-taught language arts and science both at different times. Um, now I am teaching seventh and eighth grade career tech education. So I teach our careers uh, course and I teach our engineering course and I got to teach one section of our finance course this year as well So I've done a whole lot of things To be honest if you had asked me when I first started if I was going to be in career tech I would have probably like looked at you and shrugged career tech is probably my favorite thing. I've ever done um, I love it and it's It's a passion for me that and ed tech are just my two favorite things. So I cannot believe that you have done such a wide variety of roles. What an incredible resume that you've really built and wonderful to, to end up in a position that you really enjoy. You know, it's it's the end of March, beginning of April. People are thinking about if they want to make a change. It's possibly now the right time to be thinking through that stuff. Totally. And I feel like you're a perfect testament of somebody who's been like dipping their toe in the water to find different things you enjoy. And the best part is that you can enjoy something for a period of time and then enjoy something else, another period or phase of life. And isn't that the beauty of having that flexibility? It really is. And to be honest, um, when I left the special ed world, it I didn't have anything to do with the kids. It was like a lot of the documentation and paper and stuff. It was just so exhausting. Yeah. I Now I get to see our gifted kids, our ESL kids, all of the, like everybody. So instead of just getting to see that small group of inclusion kids and, you know, the other kids that are mixed in there, I get to see all the kids now, which is a whole other experience. And I get new kids every nine weeks. So I'm seeing 125-ish kids, and then I get another new 125 kids in nine weeks. So I see literally pretty much everybody. I love this journey. If any of you are currently listening and maybe thinking about making a move or at least doing the reflection to decide if you will or stay exactly where you are because you enjoy it. Um, I'd love to see in the comments, you know, some questions for Lisa that maybe she could give some advice on later on. That'll be really helpful. Lisa, yeah. I know that there's a lot of educators that have already connected with you or would love to connect with you after this show, but 
tell me a little bit, how did you get involved in the Teach Better family? Like where in the world did you come across <laughs> this community? And and have you been around for a while? Tell us all the stuff. Okay, so Chad actually came out to my building in, I don't even know how long ago it's been, to teach about grid method. It was before the Teach Better conference. When, what year was that? Teach Better conference started in 2019. So we're talking okay. like 2018, 2017 vibes. Yes. Chad was in our building 2017, 2018, and I connected up with him. It was the first year I taught career tech, so it was 2018, because I was like, I don't want to do with this. There you go. Um, he was in our building 2018. I connected up with him like immediately because I was so into the whole mastery based learning and grid and self paced learning and stuff like that. Like he and I connected up like pretty much right then. And then I kind of stayed connected up with the group I had. Um, I've been in the community. I've been kind of quiet in the community for a while. And then within the last probably six to eight months, I've gotten really active in the ambassador program and blogging and doing some other things just because I'm trying to grow my professional resume and I'm trying to like make some more connections out there. So I've really kind of jumped onto Twitter and I've jumped on to LinkedIn and those things trying to put out more content and working with Teach Better to build some content. I love, Lisa, your dedication to expand beyond your bubble. So many of us work in a community that, of course, we love and we're excited to work with the students and we have all these colleagues around us. But it's so important as educators to expand the connections that we make and see what other communities are doing. And connecting online is a great way to do that. I have loved seeing you active over the last few months and especially having you around since you know, 2018, let's just say it's great to kind of see the journey. The team has grown a lot. And I'm sure you have an, you as an educator have grown a lot. I think so. I think so. Um, oh my goodness. The puppy's pitching a fit. Um, sorry. You're good. So yeah, I started blogging and it's actually been a really interesting process for me because I do a lot of personal reflection, but I don't ever really write it down beyond like little sticky notes and little comments on like my planning. But having that outlet of like actually writing about what I'm doing and processing what I'm doing to share, even sharing on social media and stuff in those little tiny pieces has been really um, changed the way I kind of approach things because now I'm taking a little more concentrated effort to like look at how I'm teaching and reflect on what's working, reflect on what's not, and those kind of things that I wouldn't necessarily be doing if I wasn't blogging and posting on social media. I didn't really think it would have that big of an impact. I think it's wonderful that you're trying to do that because I've been seeing your blogs. We actually have a blog that I would love to direct our community to because you're able to focus on so many different things as an educator. But one of the things that you're really committed to and love sharing on is something you just blogged about. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that? Sure. So um, in my classroom this year, I have two main focuses for skills for my students. So I teach, like I said, I teach your careers class. It's all experience based stuff. Um, and then mastery based things. And then I also teach our engineering course, which is our very first experience our kids get to any type of engineering and design and problem solving kind of things. And so communication skills and problem solving skills are my two main focuses in my classes this year. Um, I just blogged not that long ago, and I know it just reposted not that long ago about teaching problem solving skills. Our kids need that desperately. And it's something that I absolutely love doing. And the kids, they hated it first because they get so frustrated and then they love it. And to watch them go from that like frustrated, like I don't know what to do face to in a few weeks being like, okay, well maybe we should try this. It's it's a lot of fun to watch that. A lot of times I'll tell them like, listen, I am just the responsible adult monitoring this classroom. You have a project, go figure it out. I'm not yeah. answering questions. And they get so annoyed when I'm like, nope, not answering that. Go see if you can figure it out. And it cracks me up because they'll come over and they'll be like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? So yes. that's like my motto in my classroom when it's problem solving time is what's the worst that can happen. And so usually we'll make a joke like, okay, is it going to cause there to be zombies? Is it going to cause something to explode? Is it going to catch on fire? Okay. None of these things. Is anybody going to get hurt? None of these things go figure it out. I love and so they'll like laugh and then they'll go try to figure it out. And it's great to watch them make that change from relying on me to help them figure things out and give them information to take that moment of, going and actually making an effort and trying and sometimes failing. Right. You know, I'm so very important. excited for our community to think through how they can really work on problem solving skills with their students. 
on a daily basis. I know so many members of our community are desperate to have their students wanting to problem solve and sometimes getting over the hurdle of creating that culture is some of the most challenging moments that a teacher has. So Lisa, I'm gonna pause you there. We're gonna transition to our team talk and we're gonna dive into this content. Stick with us. sticking with us here on the Teach Better Today morning show. Special shout out to those of you listening on the Teach Better Talk podcast. Please make sure you head over there to subscribe, rate, and review so we can continue to meet even more educators. We're in our Team Talk segment and Lisa was just starting to skim the surface on one of her most passionate areas, which is teaching problem solving skills, something that I know many, many educators are interested in, something that we all have tried to do probably failed a few times. And Lisa has continued to share her ideas via blog and now on the Teach Better Today morning show. Lisa, for an educator who wants to move in this direction, wants to share, you know, with their students how they can build this problem solving skill mentality, you know, what are some of the go-to starters that you like to suggest? Because even just what you suggested in the last component of our show of just saying the phrase, what's the worst that can happen? That alone is a great strategy to share with educators. So what are your, what are your go-to suggestions for people? So I think, first of all, it's scary because I know when I first, especially our engineering class, when I first started teaching it, I was like, well, what if somebody, you know, we're building something and something gets broken or somebody gets hurt or this stuff happens. And it's scary because you don't know what's going to happen. And so I had to embrace that fear myself initially because these kids are afraid of messing up and I'm just as afraid of making mistakes. And so kind of embracing that idea that the kids are gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna make mistakes and it's okay, is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk to my kids all the time that I mess up all the time. Like I will, oh, I have another blog about that, by the way. (laughs) That's my most recent one. I talk to my kids about the fact I mess up all the time. Like I'll joke and be like, oh man, teacher failed. That crazy teacher, when she ran copies, they're they're stapled on the bottom instead of the top. I don't know what happened to her. And so like we joke all the time in my classroom about making mistakes. It becomes like a running like, yep, I messed up. Okay, so let's do something different. Or you messed up. Okay, well, let's try again. So it kind of becomes comedy. Mm -hmm. And like, I have no hesitation to like make a joke out of myself. Like, oh, yep, screwed that up again, didn't I? So I'll make fun of myself and the kids think it's hilarious and I laugh and we move on. Um, So I think that's the first piece is you have to be not afraid to make mistakes Mm -hmm. and you have to not be afraid to go into a problem solving lesson or activity, be afraid that it's going to fail because it might. And again, if it fails, like you might've wasted 20 minutes of your day, but now, you know, especially if you're in a situation where I am, I teach multiple periods per day. My first class period, if something is messed up, or makes a mistake or doesn't work the way I want it to, I have that second to adjust and try something different. So I think you have to be willing to do that too. You know, one of the things, Lisa, that I want to highlight in this reflection of being willing to make mistakes is almost identifying what bombing the lesson would look like or what a successful lesson would look like. Like something I really appreciate you shared earlier is like, did zombies enter the room? Is something on fire? Did a student get hurt? It's, it's kind of nice to be able to say, okay, I have a list of 10 things. And if it happens, we're in, you were in deep trouble. But right. you know, if not, it wasn't a fail. And so sometimes the hurdle of being scared of making a mistake or being uncomfortable stepping out of your comfort zone might be to set the, a low bar to say, you know what, as long as these things don't happen, as long as no kids go to the nurse, we're going to have a successful day today. And sometimes it kind of gives you the freedom to, to mm-hmm. let go of some of those concerns. Absolutely. And let's be honest, I've sent kids to the nurse. I mean, that's happened. Like we use, 
engineering class, we use hot glue guns. We cut things out. Like I've sent kids to the nurse. I'm like, it happens. Like, and the kids are like, are you, I burned myself. Are you mad at me? And I'm like, no, did you burn yourself on purpose? No. Did yeah. you burn someone else? No, it's fine. Are you okay? Right. Um, so one of the things I did, it can be really small things. So my engineering class, we talk about at the very beginning that engineers are problem solvers. And that's really the theme through the whole class is that engineers solve problems and we work on solving problems. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I did with them last week, and this was the first time I tried this lesson, is we did problem solving stations. And so I set up six stations in my classroom. Some of them were puzzles I knew they could solve, and some of them were things that I didn't think they could. And so like I had one station set up with the math tangram shapes, and they had like different pictures, and they had to lay the shapes out. Pretty easy. They got a sticker on their little paper. Let me tell you, seventh and eighth graders still love scratch and sniff stickers. It was hilarious. So they got their sticker like, hey, you solved the puzzle. Here's your sticker. And I even said up front, look, there are two stations that I don't think you're going to solve. the. I mean, if you don't solve the problems and you don't solve the puzzles, it's OK. And there was one that literally not one kid solved it, not one. And so then became a challenge of, well, nobody else has solved it. Maybe I can. Ooh. So and I set it up with that expectation. Like if you solve it, great. I'm still going to give you your sticker on your paper for attempting to solve it. Okay. So you still are going to get points and you're still going to get your grade for attempting to solve it. So even if you're not successful in solving the problem, my vision of success is really you making an effort to solve it and seeing your problem solving like mind process, yeah, your thought process. And so, um, so they did the tangram shapes and then the one puzzle that nobody solved, it's four cubes. They fit into a box, but they're not actually cubes. <laughs> They have like slanted sides and you have to do it in an exactly perfect way and they won't fit if you don't do it exactly perfect. So that one drove kids crazy and they all got their sticker because they all tried it, but not one kid solved it. And I had like three kids that were like, I'm going to solve this thing. I'm like, okay, please don't break it or hurt yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but then right after that one, I had one set up on my touch panel. It's a pen code solver. So it's like, it was like Wordle. <laughs> Oh my lord! Hang on one second. The puppy wants to know why he doesn't get to do these activities. Why does she not get to talk to people? She, yeah, her ball, has, her ball has rolled underneath something. I that hate when that can. happens. That's my constant. Yeah. I just honestly trying That's to find life. little places that the ball can roll over is a roll under is the right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Literally right in front of her face. Okay. So anyway, so then I set up the pen solver on my pen, my touch panel. First of all, they got to touch the big touch screen panel, which was a huge deal. Um, but it was like Wordle basically with numbers. They loved that one. Every single kid solved it. So they went from one that nobody that I had in my mind knowing probably nobody's going to solve this one to one that I knew everybody could solve. So they went from like, oh, this was kind of a fail. And they're like, but I didn't get it. I'm like, OK, go to the next station and try the next station. And they were successful at the next one. So I set it up like that on purpose as well so that even if they'd had a fail at station two, I knew when they went to station three, they'd be successful. Well, and I think that's going to be a great takeaway for our community here that teaches all different types of students, all different types of subjects, many in leadership positions, is if you're trying to instill problem-solving skills into the community you serve, whether they be teachers that you're supporting or students that you're supporting or parents that you're collaborating with, I like the reflection of be really clear internally of what a what a major fail looks like because you're probably going to be successful 99% of the time and you can plan around what you don't want to have occur more quickly and the other element is to give the variety so you can give the wins to the students that you're working with and also then challenge their thinking and build that motivation to be able to persevere which is so important Lisa, I know we're totally over time for the show, but you have blogs on this. Yes. You are an incredible educator in our community. You're constantly willing to support different people. And especially if you're a part of our Teach Better family, you're a very easy person to reach out to. Do you mind sharing how our community can stay connected to you? Absolutely. So I use the same two um, handles pretty much on everything. If you look for me on Instagram, it's going to be E L L E L. And then uh, three underscores J-A-Y because my initials are L-J. Um, pretty much everywhere else my handle is Mrs. J-147. So I would love for people to reach out to me. Let me know if you have any ideas or you want help with anything or even feedback, whatever it is. I try to post on a pretty regular basis things that are happening in my classroom. So I would love it. That would be great. 
be so fun. Friends, you can also head over to the Teach Better blog to be able to read Lisa's ideas. And then, of course, if you have any issues connecting with Lisa, maybe you aren't typing the handle incorrectly or whatever, reach out to a member of our team. We know how to get connect and connect with her. So yeah. we'd be happy to send that over for all of you. Lisa, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing these ideas. This was such a positive and uplifting episode. I'm, I hope that you choose to come back to the Teach Better Today morning show sometime soon. That'd be awesome. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. For everyone else, we hope you have an amazing day ahead. Do not be a stranger and let us know if you need anything. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. 